Hello everyone, in this second part of our video tutorial, I would like to show you how can we use the rigid bodies and the kangaroo tool physics simulations to simulating their behavior and using it for our design. In the first example, we will see how a simple object with non-uniform geometry will react to the rigid body simulation. First step is to collecting a prep in our grasshopper canvas by setting one object and I will assign this as a rigid body in our kangaroo component. So next step is to adding the force of the gravity and here we see we have the point, here we have the plane, so I have to convert these planes to the point, here we see, and also the direction of the force, which is 9.8 as an example for us. And the direction is looking down from here. Now, so this is the Z and this is the negative Z, as we all know it in the previous examples. So the next step is to defining the plane collision. Here is our solid, and I want this solid is colliding the C plane, which is X and Y. And I will detect this as a collision plane and defining this plane as a solid to collide. So we have to set up our solver, but uh, keep in mind that we are using the bouncy solver of Kangaroo 2 because it's a solver with the momentum and we can using it for the rigid body. So I trying to um, trying to assign all the goal objects here bottom to turning this off and on and resetting this and I would like to see what here is going to happen Okay, this is too fast. We'll reduce the speed. And you see that hits the ground. So if I'm turning this object in some other direction and reducing the force, so I can see how slowly that is falling on the ground and trying to reach the ground with its collider. So here is the first example. But before we start the next example, I would like to say, um, show you how can we detect another plane. So here I am making a surface. Let's stop the simulation. And I can change it in any direction, for instance, as a in ramp. And here is our surface. So what do we get out of this surface? It's just only a plane. So it's a continuous plane, which is going almost to the end of this canvas. So I will set up this surface in my canvas. <coughs> and detecting a plane from that by the component is planner. Here it is. Here's the surface and you will see a plane here in the middle. So I connecting them to each other and resetting my simulation. So you see that the object is falling down and following the direction of the surface. Okay, in this example we will see how can we expand the rigid body simulation and see um, the collision between the different objects together. So here's the first um, situation, the status that they are in the air and then after the simulation they all drop down and we can see the track of how they are moving to the position that they are stable. 
So here I've prepared some geometry to use them as a simple geometry for the rigid body. The important thing is that they are not colliding with each other. So I will bring them a little bit distance. So we are making sure that they are not colliding with each other. And I will detect them as a prep here in my grasshopper canvas, set up multiple reps. And first thing I do is to assign them and define them as the rigid bodies. So the next step is to defining the collision between them. So imagine if I put meshes here and there, I will say um, there is no interaction between them. So to making an interaction, I will cross-reference my lists here. And as you see here, I have put it 8, and again 8, what is coming out is 64. It shows the interaction of those two 8s together. So this is mesh A, and this is mesh B. And we will add the solid plane, and the collision plane is already detected, that is x, y, these are our solids. And I will add uh, forces to them. So I take the component load again, and detecting the centroid of those volumes by the component volume. Here is the volume, center points, and gravity, which is same as before, negative z. And let's start with smaller amounts of force here. So connecting those. So we use again the bouncy solver of Kangaroo and detecting all the objects here. But before, I would like to um, add this, uh, the Boolean toggle and the button. The button we use for the reset, the Boolean for turning on and off. And use grab mouse to have an interaction with those objects. So we collect all of them here together. Here they are. And let's clean our tree as always to kill the nodes. And let's see how does it works. So interaction is a little bit fast, maybe because of the geometry, but you can use our own geometry. Um, what we can also try is to having an interaction. I press the Alt on my keyboard, the left one, and grabbing the objects with the left mouse key. So um, depending on what you are using, and uh, with geometry you are modifying and working with that, that would be different speeds of the simulation for sure. And you can add your own geometry and use these definitions and expanding it in the way that you want to have. So here we are done on the introduction video tutorials to form finding and using the Kangaroo 2 physics simulations. These two examples are not the only thing that we can do with the Kangaroo and there are very many other use cases and different procedures that can help our design and assisting us in our design procedure. You can download them from the GitHub website and take a look by yourself. I hope that you have enjoyed these tutorials and wish you a good time.